Hi, Carl here from Self Sufficient Hub, and we're going to be talking about crayfish today. What I'm going to be showing you is how you can catch crayfish. I'm going to be talking briefly about the legalities of it so you understand that. And I'm going to be showing you the equipment you need to use, which is super simple. And I'm also going to be showing you me catching them. And I'm also, and this is quite important, I'm going to be teaching you how you can find your own crayfish spots because that was the thing that I found most difficult was actually working out how I can find where there are some crayfish to catch. This river here behind me is the River Brew and it passes right past my house. Quick word on legalities. If you're going to use a trap that you're going to set and leave, then you do need a license, at least here in the UK. The rules will vary obviously based on where you are in the world, but here in the UK, you need a license to leave a trap and those licenses are free and you apply to the environment agency to get them. And part of the reason for that is because the native crayfish are a protected species. They're under threat here in the UK. There's a couple of other reasons as well to protect bycatch, to make sure that your traps conform to certain sizes and what have you. So you do need a license. However, please do your own research. If you're planning on using the method I'm gonna to use today, I do have a crayfish trapping license and I do use traps sometimes but the method I'm going to use today is actually even easier it's just a bit more time consuming and we're going to just physically catch them in a little hand net the sort of net you take to the beach to go crabbing with if you've got children and in fact I'll show it you now it's a really simple tiny net this is perfect this is I've got lots of different nets this is the one that I find easiest um, so it's a, just a child's beach net. Now, um, I've looked long and hard for sources regarding the legalities of doing it this way. Please do your own research, but as far as I can tell, there are no restrictions on you using this method. There's another couple of things to say, though, about the legalities of this, and that is, again, here in the UK, what we're going to be catching is the American signal crayfish. Now, they're an invasive species, and they are responsible for the death of almost all the native crayfish we have here. So there's a, just a couple of things to say on that subject. Firstly, those are the ones you want to take. Now, by taking them, you're not going to do any damage to the environment or the ecosystems. In fact, you're going to help it. You're going to possibly help the native crayfish, although to be honest, in most places, that fight is one that's already considered lost. But there are a couple of things. You need to be able to identify them because if you do catch a native crayfish, you need to know that's what you've got. And you need to be able to tell that you're only taking the invasive ones. It's also illegal for you, actually, if you do catch a signal crayfish, an American signal crayfish, the invasive ones, it's illegal for you to return it to the water. You must dispatch it. So um, those are some things to be aware of. And obviously the native ones, they're protective, protected in the opposite direction. So it's illegal for you to take them. So it's worth knowing that. But with the legalities aside, let's, uh, let's get in the water here, shall we? In, with regards to equipment, literally, it's the simplest thing in the world. There are three things I'm gonna be using. And I've already showed you the net. The second thing is a bucket with a lid. And obviously I'll punch the lid on the, the bucket so that they can all breathe and what have you. This is so I can carry them with some water in. And then the third thing is some bait. And I like to use cat food. So one pouch is all we're gonna to use today. So it, uh, you know, it's quite a cheap bait, but you can use anything. You can use things like leftover bacon, if such a thing exists in this world. It certainly doesn't in my house, but uh, maybe the fat off bacon and things like that. So anything that smells and smells meaty, obviously this is gonna give off a really strong odor in the water. So uh, with that aside, let's get in. This is really the perfect sort of habitat for crayfish. It's slow moving water and there are lots and lots of those little holes. I will show you some of them coming out. We're gonna put some bait down and then just be patient really. And we should start to see them coming out for the bait. So I'll put some bait down now and then catch up with you in a second. So you can see that they can smell the meat straight away and there it won't take long and there'll be two or three coming out to check it out. And then we're just gonna scoop it up with our net. There 
those two white marks on its claws, that's one of the ways that you actually can identify the signal crayfish from the native ones. There's our first crayfish. There we go, number two. I can certainly think of worse places to be collecting your lunch. That's a big one. Okay, so I've caught a handful, I don't know how many, five or six. And usually I would have expected a few more in the 15 minutes or so I've been here. And I'm putting that down to the weather. It's not a particularly hot day. It's certainly a good idea to come on a hot day or better still, if you're going to get a run of hot days, come towards the end of that because the water temperature, in my experience, makes a huge difference. So if you've got two or three hot days in a row and you manage to get somewhere like this on the third day, then in 10 to 15 minutes, you're going to easily have 20 crayfish or at least I know I would here in this spot because that's what happened last time. Um, so I've had enough for a meal and because I'm under a little bit of time pressure today I've got a lot of other things I need to get done um, I'm gonna knock it on the head and head back home but when I get there I'm gonna show you how I process them and everything else that I do I also want to talk to you a little bit about how you find a crayfish spot the easiest way, the best way, is just to ask people in your local area. And the reason for that is because you're going to need to be in touch with the landowner, or any, landowner anyway or whoever owns the fishing rights because you're going to need their permission. Just like any kind of foraging, you're going to need the permission to access them. But another good thing about finding crayfish spots is if you speak to fishermen, because crayfish are actually detrimental to the habitats. And generally speaking, fishing clubs will allow you to come and take crayfish um, because you're actually helping them. And then the last place and how I confirmed that there were some here before I came and looked was um, online. You can access things that are like Species Atlas and the one I use in the UK, I think it's called MBM, MBM Species Atlas. And you type in the species that you're looking for and it will show you where there's been confirmed sightings of them. So that was a really useful tool for me. And there's equivalents all around the world. All sorts of ecology websites and places like that that deal with species data. That's a great resource online. Just got back and we're going to... Basically, just replace this water with some fresh water to purge them, to allow them to clean themselves, basically, of all that silty river water. So there's five in there, not masses, but enough for a small meal. Let's get them some fresh water. Okay, so these guys have been in this clean water now, which I've been regularly changing for 24 hours. So it means that they'll be all purged and they won't be muddy. That's what people would normally refer to it as when they're not clean. So um, they're not gonna be muddy, they're gonna be nice and clean. So what we're gonna do next is I'm not going to film it for a couple of reasons. Firstly, because it would be virtually impossible for me to film it properly. And the second of which, because I'm not sure YouTube's going to like it, but I'm going to humanely dispatch them. And it's really simple. I'm just going to hold them on the chopping board and I'm going to drive a knife down into the back 
just behind their heads and that severs the spinal cord and kills them as close to instantly as you can. So really humanely. And then we're going to put them in some uh, pan of boiling water for just five or six minutes. And we're gonna serve them with our dinner tonight. So you literally, you just put them in a pan of boiling water. But uh, when they turn that really lovely red color, which these are almost there, when they're that color all the way through, then they're ready. Try and dry all his meals in the There you go. Looks delicious, tastes delicious. Simple as that. <laughs>